Okay, so another painting video of Solomon Kane, and this time it's a logger. Uh, it's one of my favourite miniatures um, that comes with the with Wave One, and uh, been playing this virtually, well, online um, over social media, effectively um, uh, with a couple of friends. Uh, so it's it's worked quite well. Um, but I thought I'd get the yoga painted up and see uh, just such a great miniature even though in the um in the book he's got goats but that looks doesn't look like a goat that looks like a now i've looked at it this looks like a fox so we'll paint that as a fox okay so i'm going to start in with the flesh and we're going to go in with gilliman flesh just as because this is uh the ogre's not green or anything like that he's uh, literally just flesh colored as it were and we've got some some gray prime on there instead of the um wraith bone so that should give us a darker tone in color as well The arm's done. Nice big chunky miniature. Good detail again. And um, once I've finished the Ogre chapter, I'll be putting out a review of Solomon Kane. My thoughts about the game. But, you know, it's very, very positive overall. Um, love the game. I've played through Skulls and the Stars, uh, which I've recorded. Um, not all of the um, chapters are up yet. But so fun. So good. <laughs> I've also started the Blue Flame of Vengeance myself. Just to play. On my own. I also had a little play test with uh, playing as a, as a darkness player, uh, which actually seems really quite cool. I wouldn't say as as many choices as a player, to be fair, uh, but it is cool. It is cool to be going against all the players. So if you've got five players, I think that'll be a, a great laugh. I think that'll be fantastic fun. Still waiting on Street Fighter. Just waiting for that dispatch email. No, no, it's coming soon. That's what I'm waiting for. Plenty to paint, by the way. Uh, you know, well, uh, I carried on a bit of blood rage recently, trying to get that complete. And uh, with the Kickstarter of. Uh, Mythic Battle Ragnarok, which looks great, by the way. Uh, I didn't get the first one, uh, the Pantheon, and um, that's the one I really want to get. Uh, so I'm actually tempted. I chucked in a dollar, and then uh, hopefully the pledge manager will last a while, which gives me time to uh, get together the funds to maybe get, um, get that coming. Right, there's the skin tone done. Oh, hands, 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 hands. It's nearly done.
And as always, guys, is this um, using Citadel contrast paints uh, to try and go through getting decentish results with a short amount of time spent painting, which with my backlog, like I'm sure many uh, other people have got the same, uh, you know, that's really a handy thing to be able to do. Also, if you're just starting out and painting again, it's a really nice way to, to get good results with relative ease, um, I, I believe. That's uh, the, big, the big advantage of these contrast paints. Oops. Are they pine cones? These are some sort of, perhaps not, some sort of medallion or something on his uh, wrist there. Okay. So that's the skin tone done. With uh, Gillum and Flesh, as always. As I move on. So next, so I'm thinking of Snakebite Lever for the majority of him. Uh, this is going to be... Uh, maybe Skeleton Horde? Or should I do it as white? I might do it as white, actually, like a white fur. Yeah, uh, Apothecary White on there. Military and green on the hood. Um, Agaros on the strappings. Probably white on those as well. That's what he's got on his uh, on his top. So let's go with the apothecary white. This will give a kind of greyness anyway, which is going to look hopefully pretty good. You can see the got the claws there of whatever this pelt is. As we... Uh, go around. You know what, I'm going to go bigger brush. This is a bit of a chunky amount to uh, to cover. As we uh, put down, that's a foot or something. Again, light tone, so it doesn't really matter if you get over other bits. Uh, that's part of the hide. Yeah, we'll go with that as being part of the hide as well. We'll do the same for his arms here. Oh, I've missed out a spot of uh, skin there. I need to be over, gone over again at some point. Hmm. 
My worry is right at the dregs of this paint pot. I'm not sure how good the air. Uh, not sure how good the air uh, pigment is. The last sections of these contrast paints. I mean, if it's slightly grey, it's fine in this case. Um, but I did notice that when I was doing Kingpin that it was perhaps a bit more greyer than normal. Obviously, you can't have pure white tones. It has to be slightly grey. That's fine. Okay. So that's the... Yep. That's the fur done. Apothecary white. Next, I think we get the snake bite leather put on. It's the one that doesn't open. I'm going to stay with the same, same brush. Just gonna go. Just all of the um, I can I can uh, touch up stitching later. I think. As we continue around the back. I suppose this should be the same as the hat, but I kind of want to go with a hat with a um, a green colour feel. It's my original thoughts. Just get underneath here. Smaller brush.
sorry, sorry, this is a little beyond picture there. Mm, don't really know why I'm going to do those loops anyway. A lot of little areas to get your brush into, which isn't easy. I'm happy with that. Hang on a second, just uh, take away the paint from there. Do some around the edges. Here we go. Okay, now the top part. It's a lot of paint on there. <laughs> I'm carrying on with the snake bite leather here. It's always a worry to have it a bit too monotone. But sometimes you could go too much the, the wrong way if you use too many different colours and don't get the desired effect. It looks too messy and muddled. As I say, just trying to get the paintbrush underneath all these areas here. Not making a complete pig's ear of it. I don't mind a little bit on the underneath, other side there. That's fine. Okay, and that's some. Some more. Okay, the snake bite leather. Okay. <clears throat> 
the military and green look a bit odd on the hood. See, if I do that snake bite leather as well, I think it's just going to look a bit boring. Hmm. I'll have to have a little think. Military and green. Oh, I can't. That's what I wanted to go. Let's let's go with it. Let's see what happens. Military and green. That'll be right, actually. I'm just make sure. Yeah, I'll be fine. Maybe do a green satchel as well, just to try and get the. Uh, No, uh, similar tone elsewhere. There we go. So I'm going to turn green down. I think it's time to do the Agoras, Agoras Dunes for all of the ropes and stuff like that. Got a few bits and bobs. I'm actually going to do all of these in Agoras Dunes first of all. They're like little twigs that have been used to create legging, leg armor, whatever you want to call it. Looks like we've got some more fur there. Just be a little bit more careful. Yeah, I'm going in with wildwood over the uh, the kind of strapping i don't know what you call it the support the wood supports so it doesn't matter if i get this to be honest over those i'm trying to do it relatively relatively neatly
as we continue up. Oops. And again, it's, as always with the contrast paints, you'll start to see the fruits of your labor relatively quickly. Uh, coming through there. Oops. There we go. So that's that bit done. So now we're going to go to the normal strap. So rope first. Let's hit this rope first with some of this. Rigorous dunes. Cool. So, and then I think we'll carry on the agoras. Doing... Okay, this is all right. And the rope's going around here. It's quite similar, but it's just a slightly different tone. Which is fine. Is that, is that like stitching or that could, no, I would do those metal and maybe a bone there or two as well. That is next. As we keep going through, strapping here, just taking a little bit of care because uh, we've already done the white, obviously, which is a much lighter tone. So any mistakes will show up. A bit hard to get underneath some of these. That's fine. That's good.
Oh, I quite like the green hood. Ooh, easy, what are you doing with the brush? No, it's definitely replayable the game as well uh it depends on depends on the story i think depends on how replayable um like if you have to sort out any puzzles which we have had to do with this example the ogre um scenario for example story then obviously the next time you do it it's going to be pretty obvious what you have to do um so that's slightly different actually um let me think let me think a second I think we might go in with the boots. Yeah. Let's go the Agoros on the boots as well. It's going to be, well, I would normally use Agoros with mud as well. But that might be Agoros overload. Um, hard to see the detail actually here in the strapping of the foot. Can try and try and relatively hard not to get it all over the the fur. It's coming through, but again, it would be muddy. Um, so I won't worry too much about hitting over parts of it. And wildwood is what I'm going to do the strapping with. So again, not really fussed too much about. I rather get in in nooks and crannies with this. Can go in with some white just to touch that up, that's not a problem. Okay, nearly. Right, so that's the feet done. I think we'll carry on with the strapping around these. I mean, a lot of the detail is so, so pronounced that you should let the brush, and again, wild wood on underneath, so not really too, too disappointed if I don't get every single bit. If there's a little bit of white shown, it's not going to be the end of the world. So you see that, you know, I'm going over, oops, I need to be a little bit careful of the feet that I've just done. So good to get tonal differences in the woods, not the worst 
Oops, I didn't want to do that though. Don't particularly want a splodge of of this brown on the cloak. On the fur, sorry. So just getting that off. Done it again. Okay, pretty happy with it. Okay. Right. It's looking cool. Uh, some strapping on the club. Do you want to go the same? Yeah, let's let's be consistent with the strapping. Even there's rope as well. Yeah, that's fine. Huge club. So I'm just trying to get in there. Okay. Well, that's the strapping done. Yep. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to do something with these. Get, I think it may be black for the uh, for the whole the whole stitching. Maybe I don't know. On the side of yeah. Or maybe just going with this. Yeah, let's do that next. So we'll go to a, our small brush, our psycho, as it's called. Oops. And what I'm going to do here is just hit these stitches. Might have wanted to go gray, green in there just to show that it's a continuation of the uh, the hood. Actually, because this is where he's, he's he's sewed or hashed together different pelts. Okay. Yeah, that looks, I mean, especially from the back, it looks much better. So it's coming along. 
Um, right, I think we're going with the wildwood now. So back to the slightly bigger brush of the zero with wildwood. This is for all the wood. Don't worry about putting too much on, because again, just having different amounts of tone, which is effectively created with different amounts of paint, uh, will show it as just not one monochromatic type of piece of wood, which obviously in real life would be the case. I mean, obviously the detail, the details and, and all these uh, recesses is where the paint will naturally flow to, of course. Um, but don't, what I'm trying to say is don't worry too much about kind of getting it all even, uh, because naturally that's not what it would. Just try and, try and let the paint take over and do the job for you. That's terrible. Again, just brush your finger over the top, just make sure you cover up any bits that you just went over. So if you make a mistake, I just did. Perhaps a bit too much paint in those bits. So I'm just going to drag some of that paint away, and use it elsewhere. Now I'm going to use the uh, smaller brush to get close to that cloak there, so don't worry, I will fill in the bits that have not worked. A bit too much paint in that one there, let's take some of that away. Small brush while we're doing this bit. So I just feel like I need to get in there. So that should be rope. Ah, okay, so I need to, fair enough. So that last bit there. Okay. 
So this is sticks done on his back. Now the tree branches. Well, I got my small brush out and I'll do bits that need a little bit more finesse. just using this smaller brush so I you know can try and get a little bit more of a control into these um, into this amazingly detailed club That's actually antlers, isn't it? Oh, hang on a minute. They're antlers, I think. Yes, they are. Not tree stumps. Whoops. Ah, right, okay. I don't mind going in with this for the base of the antlers, but uh, certainly the tops need to be a lot, a lot more uh, whiter uh, than that. I thought it was all tree, but no, they're all antlers. Interesting. That's fine. We can remedy that. Uh, just get a massive bodge of it in there. Again, just making sure we are we've got some detail using a smaller brush. No more job there, never mind. Okay. So the club needs to uh Well I've got this brush and I'll just can't keep using it. Okay, so we need antler style things, but we're going to have to redo part of that club. Okay, I think we're time for the fox next. So I'm just going to quickly grab a picture of a fox. Uh, I guess we'll do the red fox, right? The classic red fox. Okay, awesome. Right, so orange, definitely orange. Where's my orange gone? Griffhound Orange Festival. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
And then what we're going to do is just use a little bit of <coughs> this contrast medium. To give it a bit of a blend. Yeah, that's it. On the top it's orange. Go down the whole tail here. There we go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a fox, you know. Then it's got the white underbelly, which is fine, which is what I've got. And then it's got black paws. So I think what we'll do is actually go with some null null. His tongue sticking out. <laughs> His tongue sticking out. How funny. I'm just hitting these paws. And the tail as well. It's already looking quite good. Uh, I think it'll be a bit of dance in between. Perfect. There's a little fox he's holding there. Right, these look like pine cones, right? But I think, I think there's something else. I think there's some sort of medallions or something like that. Some sort of ornament. Right, uh, anyway, uh, we're going to do the back of his hands, or back of one hand anyway, with strapping made from... Uh, I might go green again just to get those similar tones coming in each time so back to military on green I mean to be completely honest you go with whichever colours you really want because there's no there's no set colour scheme for this unlike Solomon Kane. Then the next bit we want to do is the wildwood on the legs. So back down, back to the wildwood. And to be honest, I might might use the wildwood for uh, all of the stitching on, on the uh, torso. Mm. 
seen you. That's not, that's not easy to get all of. Okay. So we'll do the top part because that doesn't look right. And sorry if my hair and stuff's in the way, so I try to get the detail here. I get the uh... great. It's those done. Uh, hair wise. Anyways, I think we'll go for a We've done a lot of browns, so maybe something slightly different. Uh maybe something like dunno. Um something like maybe a blonde colour. Well that looked really stupid. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't, no, black, 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 black. Oh, that's me black. Some black Templar. Might as well stay with a smaller brush here. Ah. Just got to be careful of... Um, not getting over the skin there. I'm not doing very well here. No, I'm not happy with that at all. Too much paint on the brush, very much loaded. So now, There you go. Just need to redo that bit. I and, uh, missed a whole bit there. Right? Yeah, black hair is cool. 
Oh, we haven't done those yet either. They need to be wildwood as well on the feet. Um, then we got stone, which is pretty much done. To be honest, don't need to do a lot to that. Uh, we just need to put some silicon and grey on that. And then these things, I think I can do these metal. I can do metal work with those. So this stitching, I want to be slightly different. So I think I think I might go in black actually. I might yeah, let's keep going with the black temple a minute. I think that'll let's actually put it in me. To be fair, you've probably got a bit of odds and ends, so it probably won't all be black. It's black a bit. Hmm. Not, I'm not sure. I'm not convinced by black. Um, where am I? Maybe I am. I don't know. Oh, no, no, I think, I, yeah, I think the black will work, actually. To be honest, whatever colour you choose for the stitching, as long as it's different to what it's been stitched to, I, I would say it'll, um, whether you go lighter or darker, it should look better. They've gone to the trouble of making, um, of sculpting the stitching. It's worth uh, spending the time to, to paint it. Okay. Yeah, the, the blacks, I think the black works. Right, so with the stitching now done, nearly. What's going on here? Yep, 
zase stretching them. Uh, let's move on to those horns and sort those horns out. Antlers, antlers of his club. We're on an hour and ten nearly. It's not too bad. He's definitely coming along. So we want, I'm going to use some Wraithbone base. Just to sort these antlers out again. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Okay, should we get some metal work going? We're waiting for that to dry. Yes, I think there was a bit of rope I needed just to, just to touch up. So back to Agoras Dunes and with a small brush. It's just over in the corner here. Say that's rope as well. That's it. It's actually the rope comes in from there, doesn't it? Which I missed. Perfect. Okay, happy, happy, happy. Right, this antler, we need some skeleton hoard. that's been thinned down. So the way to do this, I, th I think, is to use some contrast medium. So let's plaster on some of this at the base of the antlers, like, I forgot to, never mind. Like so. That's looking, that looks fine, actually. Let's quickly get the contrast medium on while it's still wet. Just uh, get some kind of blending going on here. I don't want them to be perfectly white. Good, that's fine. Back to the skeleton horde. Got 
Kirsch mehr. Nice. There's some antlers now. Well, it's more, well, more like antlers rather than branches, what I first thought they were. Okay, we need the metal work now, so load a belcher. I think that's the only metal he's got on him. That looks like a bone. Maybe. Don't know what that is actually. That might be that. That's definitely a bone there. Well, oh no, that's part of the um, it's part of the hide there. Yeah, I'm going to do that bone. So that's fine. Yeah, I don't see any other metal. A stone there. <coughs> Should we get that apothecary white and do his do his uh, do his legs a minute? They look a bit stupid, all completely white. I've actually gone over all of that, haven't I? Sure, I'm happy with that. No, I'm not happy with that. So I'm gonna head back over this with some wraith bone. Let's see that now. And do the bone while I'm there. So back to the wraith bone base. touch I put on the fur parts here and then the bone bit here It's <laughs> better. And I just noticed as well. I need some snake bite leather back again. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Snake bite leather just to near the stone part on his back. There's just a missing 
not happy with this bit in here. We just need to do that. And then we need to do the feet. Let's get basilicon and grey for the stone itself. So basilicon and grey. So the stone itself and the doing this grey. There you go. Right, what am I gonna do with this? Is it gonna be gold, you reckon? On this, on these pine cone things? Um, I don't know. Let's start with some silver around here. Around here. So just put the basilicon and grey over the top of those. Maybe a bronze colour, something like that. Hmm. Yeah, maybe a bronze colour on the middle. Something to make it stand out a little bit different. Think about that. Right, that white will be dry, so back in with apothecary white. Okay. Yeah, it's come around all right. Okay, uh, bu bu bum. ivory, skeleton hoard. I think I'm just going to do the whole of the skeleton hoard now. Onto that little necklace bit. And we're going to go ivory, we're going to go copper. So that same orange that we used before, Griffound orange, we're going to use again. Need that copper colour. Awesome. Right, so it's faces, what's left to do. Oh, and those. let's do those boots. <laughs> keep saying the boots and I keep forgetting. So let's get in that wild wood again. And what time are we on? We're on hour and 20 minutes. So it's not been the quickest of miniatures, but he's quite involved, I suppose. Oh, that's too much, too much paint on that one. I've got away with it, but
That's what we used to be. Okay. It's a bit better. Got a whole other base to do, obviously, yeah. Uh, let's get on to the eye. So, yeah, let's get some, get back some wraith bone. Let's try and do some eyes. So we've got the whites of the eyes. They might give uh, those lips a little bit of color with some Reichland Flesh Shade. We need the eyebrows. Can't forget the eyebrows. So going back with Black Templar. His face actually looking like a face. I think we just need to just do a little bit more on the top there. There we go. And keeping with the black. Slitty eyes, those the pupils. It's not bad, it's not amazing. But we can do with that, I think. Let's just get a bit of a wet brush. Let's just try and. No, it's dried. Okay, that's fine. Now, uh, what we can do. Let's go back with some of this. Is there any left? No. That's cool. And there is the ogre finished. Natural ogre finished. Uh, we need to do the base, so let's crack on with that. What we're looking at is uh, perhaps a bit of mud. What is all that? Is that moss? Some moss in there. Okay, okay, I got you. So <clears throat> I'm going to use. What am I going to use? What am I going to use? I've got to think this through now. I'm going to go with. Something. <laughs> the mud I'm going to go with the wildwood. I'm 
Let me hit the mud. Wildwood. Oh, what am I doing? Mm, I want to do the trees as wildwood as well. Um, I might. I might go over that with something different. I've got to touch up those bits that I've gone over as well. Yeah, I should have gone the mud. Perhaps with something slightly either. Darker brown. I've got a cygor brown, which is really dark brown. That's fine. Is that wood or stone? No, I've just done it. That's definitely wood. That's definitely stone. So this is wood. Mm -hmm. so just head over the stump here, the wildwood. Uh, just doing the mud patches as well while I'm here, as best as I possibly can. It's not easy. I know a lot of people try to get, oops, try to get them off their base so they can do this stage with a lot more control. Uh, I can't get in there. Okay, so I'm pretty happy, pretty happy with that. Now we're going to go to the Militarum Green to do the moss. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep some of this Iandan yellow, whoops, I'm going to keep some of this Iandan yellow at bay, yeah, ready, and the Militarum Green. Ready to do like a two-tone effect. Right, well, that's still wet. I'm gonna get this high end in yellow. <gasps> oh, that could have been much more disastrous. You should never really open two pots at the same time. <laughs> I did lose a fair amount of paint there. Uh, you haven't lived unless you, uh, you've dropped paint pots, <laughs> spilt paint everywhere. Oh, well, never mind. It's a ton of military and green gone. Yeah, you should do one paint pot at a time, really, because that can go in there. What we're going to do is just dab on some of this yellow around the bits I've just done. Okay. 
Nice. Uh, let's get back the green. Ah, that's going to be all sticky. As long as I don't get it all over the miniature, of course. Just be careful of that. Yellow. Awesome. So that's the moss done. Ah, see, see, ah. Fortunately, I've got it. I'm going to leave that as a grass stain. I mean, it's not ideal. Ah, that's the problem. You get it on your hands and then you hold the miniature. That's why you should use a holder. You see, I've taken away a lot of the paint from there, but that's fine. I'm going to retouch that up in a bit. Uh, but silicon and grey's next. The stonework. If I leave this stone. Okay. Okay, that's the base done. I'm actually quite happy with the wildwood being the, the mud. That looks fine. Um, she needs to do the claws. I just realized she's got the claws. So sticking with the basilicum gray, just going to the smaller brush, I think. Uh, the claws are here. That's a bit dark in that. And then we just need to touch up the wildwood on the back where we've been where I've been handling it. And then it'll be a black around the base to finish. Okay. 
And again, don't worry too much about it all not being exactly the same shape because it wouldn't be in real life, as I mentioned before. And there is a little girl finished. One hour and 37 minutes. A bit of a longer one. Um, you know, he's a bigger, he's a bigger ch character, a bit more detail involved with him as well. So let's get him centered and let's get this <laughs> over here. Doesn't want to stay in that position, does it? Stay. Okay. So, the ogre. You can see he's got his white fur. Needs to touch up a bit of that fur, actually. Missed out a stitch there on his right shoulder. I'm not too fussed about the greenness of that. Holding that fox, that poor fox. The fox looks good. Um, as we come round. And again, if I bring this round here. So it's a different angle. And you see the wild wood, how good that gives that kind of wood effect. Absolutely brilliant it is. And can we see the eyes? Not really. Where's the eyes? The face as well. Let's move through. Okay. Well, that was La Oga. Painting La Oga. Hope you enjoyed it. And join me again for, please do like, comment and subscribe um, if you want to see some more painting, um, Solomon Kane and others, as we as I go through some of the uh, the bigger miniatures, the more important characters as it were. Okay, until next time, keep painting.